Friends, we are back with Dave Kinney, the man who literally writes the book on classic car values and also the, I don't want to say the impetus, but the like mentor that has created Moto Man. Um, <laughs> I got to we'll rub his head again. on that yeah, whole right, thing. Exactly, yeah. So today we're going to do something special. All right. We're going to go through a list of cars, mm -hmm. like geek out about cars, but it's what period of time we're going to focus on that is interesting. 85 to 2000. Wow. That's the important one to me. How about 80 to 2000? 80 to 2000. Oh, yeah, I think we should. Because I got one I'm going to have to sneak in to 80. Okay. Maybe you're gonna let Something me from your era. I, I'd like to think that since I'm alive in this era, <laughs> my era encompasses up till right now. But... Okay. So let's jump right into it and let's start with this one you want to sneak in. Bandit era Trans Amps. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, and so we're talking 77, 78, 79, you know, right in through there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, into the 80s. But uh, uh, great cars, horrible horsepower. Horrible. Like 170. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's I mean, more than no, I thought. That's the big motor, okay? Yeah. But uh, I mean, 6.6 liters. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes it's not about going fast, it's about cruising. It is about know? cruising, especially with and Sally Field next year. I've had more fun wedding dress, I've had more fun uh, beer runs. Uh, I've had more fun in a Trans Am than I care to think about. They're you just owned fun one, didn't you? I did. I went on the first of the Memorial uh, uh, Texarkana to Atlanta runs, <laughs> and I had a blast. It was so much fun. Uh, I did sell my Trans Am after Mr. and Mrs. Mouse moved into it and made a home of it, uh -huh. and so I had to fix everything, and then it was kind of like, eh, depressing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to have another one. There was so much fun. Not fun to drive, just okay. Is... Has the has the boat left on that? I think that you're getting in at the at the far end of it, but I yeah. still think there's room left. Right now, there's the collector ones that are you know the eight thousand mile and less cars. They're all the money right now. Mm -hmm. But I think you can get the sixty five thousand, the seventy five thousand, the hundred and fifty thousand mile one, and make it into a fun cruiser. And I think that's well, that's the reason why I'm and saying. How much are those? Our UST. Watch out for rust. You can start at about the twenty grand mark for a car that's going to have some needs. Spend as much as you want. I mean, there are special editions that cost more. There are other things that make them more valuable. Obviously, black with the screaming the gold, check in yeah. and gold, all that. T top. Iconic, iconic, iconic. T tops. I recommend the automatic in this car as opposed to the three Why? pedal. Have you driven the three pedal? In fairness, I have not driven okay. any of that era. Car. Agricultural would be the best way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, it's. <laughs> 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 Um, but if that's what you want, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna okay. diss on you for getting it. But I think that for what you want this car for, it might just be fun having a uh, uh, having an automatic. And you can own this car so ironically, right? I yeah. Mean, you can be a 35 year old and and own this car because of the movie. Um, this car transcends a lot of things, and it's a lot of fun. Practical, practical, easy to fix, all that sort of stuff. They made a billion of this series of Firebirds. Uh, you know, they made formulas, they made Trans Am, they made base cars with six cylinders. I mean, they made everything. Great parts availability. So, I mean, it's just a good choice. Not maybe a starter classic car, but the next after the starter. Do the T-Tops add more value? Yes, they do. Yeah, but they how do. much? Uh, there are two series of T-Tops, believe it or not. Some were made by Hearst. The others, I think, were in-house or made by another supplier. I think, oh, ASC, I think, mm -hmm. made them. Uh, the bigger ones I like better. They're the ASC ones. But I think the Hearst ones are worth more. It's not a big deal. It's it's kind of, you know, it's all the package. You want the air conditioning. You want to make sure you've got, you know, some of the other choices. You want to, you know, if you're, if you're black, you want the gold dash. You mm -hmm. know, the black car with the gold dash is kind of the iconic one. So you have a lot of decisions to make. That's really I'm disco gonna era. Say, I'm going to say 2500 bucks. Oh, like wow. That. So... At yeah. least 10% of the value. Yeah, and plus it makes the car more saleable. And everybody forgets that. It's like not the initial cost of getting it. But if you think of everybody who's buying a car, funnel, okay? Top of the funnel, everybody wants the T-top. Unless, of course, they've had one and they realize that they always leak. Mm. But um, And then the funnel goes down and then you're into the, you know, the sky blue one or the, you know, and they had a nice sky blue edition, to be fair. But all the way down to the kind of lousy ones with no equipment on them. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the one. They're hard so to sell. So T-top is the top. But yeah, but it's easier. It makes it easier to sell. You have a bigger, you know, basket of people to grab from. Where do you think these are going in terms of value? Uh, you know, I think we're almost there for the valuation. They're going to do mm -hmm. better than inflation. Uh, but I just, I like this recommendation because it's just a car that you can have fun with. And mm -hmm. you're not going to lose money if you... Don't do stupid things like mm -hmm. do a $100,000 restoration on a $35,000 car. Now, you know Dick Winkles. Yeah. And he stupidly sold not one, but two Super Duties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 74s. Earlier than what we're talking about. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever get to those values? 
there's a lot of these out there. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think we're going to see the uh, the two hundred and three hundred thousand uh, dollar Trans Am car that has you know kind of special things going for it, like you know the, the, still in a wrapper nine hundred and ninety mile car, yeah. that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, but uh, turn up know, at an auction kind of thing. Exactly. Um, you know the movie. Yeah, it's a little piece out of time and all that sort of stuff, but it's still funny. And you can still watch it too, and that's something. Oh, it's a great movie. Something. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. But sometimes you know the whole thing dies out. This is still great. Okay, so let's press on to our next choice. Porsche. Ooh. Nine twenty eight. Good choice. Yeah. Good yeah. choice. You know, I I got so much grief about. I, I chose this a couple of years ago. Nine twenty eight. I can even tell you a quick story. A friend of mine bought one at a charity auction. I don't mean a auction you know where people go and they raise their paddle and all mm-hmm. that he went to a like a goodwill mm-hmm. uh you know where they were selling cars bought the car for five hundred dollars it was an automatic mm-hmm. this was 10 years ago uh an immediate... s an s4 or no no it? no it was in between it wasn't an s or an s4. oh so, so it was an early car kind of a, a mid-production okay you know but uh anyhow bought the car took it to the car wash the rotating brush came off and it took all the paint off the right-hand side of the car while it was going down. This just bought this car for $500. Okay. <laughs> Got a check for $2,500 to repair it. Drove the car for another two years. Sold the car for $900, realizing that he still has 2000 bucks in his pocket. You're kidding me. That's my kind of ownership. That's the kind That's of ownership great. Moto Man could appreciate. I can appreciate that, <laughs> yes. And you have a 928 in the process. Exactly, exactly. Anyhow, 928 more expensive mm-hmm. when new than the 911. Think about That's that. something most people don't remember. Okay. V8 up front, uh, you know, completely changed everything. You know, Porsche, rear engine car, you know, mm. da-da-da-da-da, forever. V8 up front, water-cooled, obviously. All those sorts of things going on with it. They're complicated cars. This is also the buy the latest one you can find and the nicest one you can find, SS4. Um, or if you want to go old school, and this is, you know, before the time that we're talking about, Go back and get one with the Pasha interior. The oh, I thing. love that you thing. You know, whatever that kind of... That was I mean, in a movie. I don't know if you realize it. It was in um, a Looker yeah. with Albert Finney and Susan Day. And it was a nude scene of, of, of Susan Day in that movie. Uh, the I one that I remember was not a nude scene, but it was funny. It was uh, Risky Business. Oh, everybody remembers that. Of course. I'm giving you like the, the off who's the, the beat path. Who's the U-boat driver? <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's Commando. a great choice. Now, question for you. Yeah. I now these guys don't know it yet, but I have been trying to buy one of those. Mm-hmm. I've gotten skunked every step of the way. Okay. The GTs and the GTSs are not cheap cars, no. specifically manual GTSs. Yes, very hard to. Where are they going? Where are they now? A GTS manual, ninety-three. Where are they going? Um, I think you're going to have to spend sixty to get the car you want. Is that what you're finding as well? Oh, I've seen like uh, one one at auction what last Monterey for buck twenty. Yeah. They, you they see them on eBay for eighty to hundred. Yeah. For a GTS um, manual, automatic yeah. sixty. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, when you're talking about getting the right one, yeah, yeah, you are going to be above 80. And that's a lot of money for a 928. I mean, especially when, money. you know, other people say, hey, I used to own one of those things. And I went to the car. No, it's, <laughs> that's one person's story. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, um, you know, parts availability is okay. There are, they are complicated cars. Uh, it's something that you're not going to be able to, you know, Joe Mechanic, you can't fix in your driveway. Um, but, uh, you know... A lot of car for the money still uh, until you get into the sixty and eighty thousand yeah. dollar ones. So, like a real quick down and dirty, what three things you need to look out for in nine twenty eights? Rust number one, maintenance records maybe even more than rust. Although I, I'd say they're number one and number one A. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you need to get a PPI on that car. You need to have a pre purchase inspection. When you're spending fun money, you don't need to do it, but you should have a PPI and you should have a leak down test on the engine. Uh, and somebody you trust should be able to road the car and tell mm. you exactly what's wrong with it because guaranteed there's something wrong with it. So should I be worried about a 928 with a lot of miles? Is that a car can I do think, miles? Look, if the person who owned it was a Porsche Club member, and I'd say that's one of the things you want to look for is that PCA sticker on yeah. it, uh, and an airline pilot, and he's put, <laughs> uh, he's put 120,000 miles on it, you're fine. Uh, you know, somebody so who knows not about afraid of miles on that car. I, I'm not afraid of miles on a lot of cars. What it's, about the opposite? Would you be afraid of low miles on a 928? Well, when you're looking at a car with you know 3,000 miles on it that's been around that long, make sure all the rubber and plastic bits have been replaced mm-hmm. because they're bad. Even if they've just been sitting in a garage, even if it's climate controlled, mm-hmm. they're at least starting to go bad. 
Okay. So, uh, you know, that's something to watch out for, too. Okay. Uh, that's advice for almost any car, though, but it kind of goes double for a complicated car like the 928, where parts can be expensive. Complicated. Okay. Well, you know, like relationships. It's complicated. <laughs> So let's move on to uncomplicated. How about that? 83, 84, Volkswagen GTI. Still German, still fun, more fun, actually. That's and a pisser of a car to Yeah, that's great. I mean, that was like, you know, let's get in and toss it uh, was, was the directive all the way down. Uh, drivable fun. Uh, you want to make sure that you get one. You know, you're probably not going to find one with all the records on it. You're probably not going to find a two-owner one. There are not that many of them out mm -hmm. there. I mean, if you can find the adult-owned one, it really doesn't matter what you pay for it. Just buy it because in a few years it's going to be worth more. Right car, right colors, all that sort of are stuff. Are they done depreciating? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And what are they worth? Uh, well, once again, I think you can, you know, you can buy them on Craigslist for nothing, under 10000 bucks. Uh, the car you want is going to be above twenty thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, yeah, lower For mileage. A GTI. Well done. Well done. Wow! Great Teen, car. Teens Super you, fun teens to drive. Of, but I mean, think about it. What What are you going to buy new for? Okay, Kia Soul. Okay, but that's your. Well, you choice. can buy a new GTI for twenty four. Okay. All right. So you're close to a new car. And granted, it's a no, different I'm, experience. Yeah, but I'm talking for an exceptional car at that point. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So where I mean, do you see them going in value? I think those cars have a long way to go. I think that uh, um, you know there's some other choices in this kind of you know this kind of uh, um, you know uh, Honda CRX would be another one oh, that you can think SI, about. Yeah. yeah, I mean you know the, the joke is I you know find the unmodified adult owned one. It Good luck. Doesn't exist. Black and doesn't deals, exist. Man, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's like you know finding a gold piece when you're walking along. So the a competitor to the SI CRX are those going up or are those have they done depreciating? What's going on there? They're still going up. They're still going on. Oh, so they are, they are, would you consider them a classic? Yeah. The definition of classic was thrown out a while ago. Um, you know, now, you know, cars only need to be a couple months old uh, and they can be considered a classic. Uh, really, it's funny because it used to be 25 years was the kind of the rule. So what goes in, now, I've discussed this with the audience in other episodes, but I've taken this, what I've told them, I've learned from you. What makes a car classic? Uh, you know, it's 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 kind of like defining your girlfriend as beautiful, uh, or your girlfriend defining you as beautiful. Let's okay. let's be fair here. Um, it, you know, it's different taste for everybody, but a lot of the times, what we're looking for are things that made an impact when they were new, uh, things that usually had low production, or you know, maybe a subgroup of a very large production car, mm -hmm. the GTI. You know, they made lots of non-GTI Volkswagen Rabbits, and they made Jettas, and they made everything else. So. Um, you know, in this particular example, what you're looking for is uh, the car that maybe you couldn't afford when you're 17 years old, but you probably knew somebody whose dad or mom bought one for them. Or maybe you knew somebody who's, you know, whose dad or mom had one. Mm -hmm. uh, they're great little commuter cars. They always were. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that goes into it. And, you know, once again, the effect it's had on the marketplace then and the effect it's had on the marketplace now. You want a really oddball pick, too? Yes. I you do. ready? You know I love oddball. Okay, you're not. You might not like this. If it's an Avanti, I'm gonna walk out of here. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. I've already been told. Yeah. Don't mention the A word. VW made a multicolored car from the factory. When I say multicolored, it's not like one of these things that changes colors. It has different color roof, different color fenders, different color. You mean like the hippies in California do to like CRVs and uh, Rav4s? Well, something like that. But yeah. they ran out of paint, and that's why they do it. The Jetta Harlequin. Harle like the Harlequin, clown? Like the Italian clown, the Harlequin. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, they sold that here. They sold that here. I don't remember. It's somehow 125, 125 is sticking in my head. Yeah. Maybe that was one production year. Can you imagine being the guy who walks in the VW dealer and says, I'll take that one. It's got a yellow hood. It's got a green door. It's got a blue door. It's got a, a red trunk. Why it has a green uh, roof on it. Why do I think they only sold those things in Vermont? Or per perhaps Oregon. Uh, I think and at that, need... only in Eugene, Oregon. No, no, no. It's not hippie squishy. It's okay. It's okay. You know, we have a local Cars and Coffee here yeah. in Great Falls, Virginia. Yeah. Very popular. Yeah. I really wish I would have talked to this guy who brought it a couple of times, parked it next to a Lamborghini, and I, I didn't run into the guy. I wanted to go over and say, this is so much cooler. And he probably got more game. attention, didn't he? No, no. I, I think he got dissed. I think he got... Nobody knew what it was. It yeah. was like, hey, you got the cryo So is there, is there value to that car? Oh, absolutely. I would own one of those. I will own one of those if but I... But are you the only one that would do that? Well, I am an Avani owner. 
<laughs> no, no, obviously. It's, it, you know, it's an anomaly. It's a thing that happened that might okay. not ever happen again. Okay, so... So, I mean, there's your sidebar. And okay, that's, a, that's value, a sidebar. Value, let's not go crazy on those. You know, you, you, the only ones I've seen have been 180,000 mile ones. They've been used up. Uh, but I think if you had a really, really nice one and it went... You know, somewhere where somebody could understand what it was, an auction yeah. with a catalog. I mean, every VW collector, every non-air cooled VW. But it's collector not going to be one. like a twenty-three window. No bus. No, uh, nothing's going to be like a twenty-three window bus. Yeah. And, you know, eight horsepower and two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> but uh, oh, what well, you know, okay, sixteen horsepower and yeah. hundred thousand dollars, whatever. But uh, long story short, I think it's a cool car. It's a yeah. fun car, and I mean, it's one of those things. Everyone's going to be Googling that uh, after they get through watching this. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah. yeah. And that's Not while they're watching it, but and after they They're going to go to Haggerty and start putting it in there. It's going to drive the value up because exactly you guys are watching. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, that's let's what, get to... Actually, this is my, part of my e plan. <laughs> you are big 100, brother. $100,000. I don't know. That's been used before. <laughs> okay. Now let's get back to some real cars, real choices. What's the next one? Uh, let's talk about... Uh, how about some Buicks? Oh, you, you know I love me some Buicks. I, I grew up on I some know, Buicks. I know, I know. How about a GNX? Oh, how yeah, about a Grand a National? Okay, let's differentiate those. Okay, Last I saw, mm -hmm. GNXs were a hundred grand. Yeah, and yeah. you told me all of them have five miles on them yes. because everybody mothballed them. Everybody mothballed, and they just found just recently they found two of them sitting next to each other. Unfortunately, his idea of mothballing was kind of like throwing mothballs on the car <laughs> thing, um, because it was you know in a shed, so it was a shed fine, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't the best thing in the world. I mean, you want to have it in an air conditioned garage and la da 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 da. Yeah. But that doesn't always happen that way. But yeah, I have seen so many of these cars with 11 miles on them that it's kind of funny. Um, but it was the return of the American muscle car in a lot of ways. Serious car. I mean, you know, yes, this was yeah. a serious car. Yeah. Okay, so uh, door when, gaps this much, but fast. Hey, well, you know, it was extra air conditioning, <laughs> right? So no, no, no. The build quality on these things was good, um, but uh, um, yeah, now you can find them with some miles on them. Uh, but uh, yeah, they can still be you know above a hundred thousand. Even with right. miles? Uh, with miles, no. Oh, so it's no. the mothball car is a hundred grand. Yeah, exactly. Or more than? Have they gone over hundred? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been some. They've went. They've gone down a little bit too. They, yeah. They, you know, I mean, how many people want a zero mile car? You know, the zero you mile car dilemma. You can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, you have a nine mile car. You can't take it to Cars and Coffee a mile away. Explain. You're going to have an 11 Explain mile car. to them why that's a problem. Explain. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do it's some the, explaining. It's the dilemma of the of the brand new car. Um, you have an 11 mile car, making it into a 13 mile car isn't a big deal, but making it into a 33 mile car becomes a little bit less when it trips into the 100 mile car. It's in a new category. Um, there are And it lowers who, the value. Yes, That's the issue. Yes, you're driving away the value in this car. Yes. Is there something wrong with that? No. No. I mean, if you want to have the car and enjoy it, I mean, you, you know, you're, you're Mr. Peabody. You're getting in the time machine. You're going back and you're yeah. you know, driving a brand new But it car. goes back to the point of know what you're trying to do with the car before you buy it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk about Grand Nationals. You know, gonna get brothers and sisters, okay? Yeah. The Grand Nationals were kind of the, uh, you know, like me, the ones that didn't go to Duke or Chicago <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> <Okay>. whatever. Um, <laughs> but they're doing fine, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, uh, long story short, um, they don't have the performance. They don't have a lot of the goodies on them, but they're still great cars. And you can still buy good ones for 25000 bucks. all Really? Long. Really good ones, yeah. Like non-molested cars? Non-molested cars, yeah. And those... And the audience knows I'm a freak about this kind of stuff. Those you could have had with a T-top and a sunroof mm -hmm. or a sunroof. Yeah, exactly. Do those add value or take away value from the car? A T-top and sunroof? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you want it. I mean, you want, So it does add value yeah, in yeah, that car. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we're still in the fun collectible part. Yeah. And so I, I think that absolutely. Another wild card. A full of wild cards today. How about? Uh, let me guess. Let yes. me guess. 442 of that era. No. Or the Hearst Olds. But you're era. right. But yeah. you're right. Yeah, absolutely. The Hearst Olds of that era. Those are fun cars. Those I think they cars. were so cool. Looking. What's wrong with a Monte Carlo Aero Coupe? Oh, I don't like the way they look. Well, I don't care. <laughs> you're a moto man. You're not taste man. Okay? <laughs> I, I, look, I don't like them as much. Uh, we can agree on that. Yeah. And Monte Carlo is still a little challenging to me. I mean, Are they valuable? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They, in the Aero Coupes especially. You know, the, the NASCAR oh, yeah. inspired rear window. Absolutely. And they did and the Pontiac they, with that Aero Coupe did. too. Yeah, they did. So, I mean, but uh, I like the Monte Carlo with the Aero Coupe. I just like the way it comes together. It looks good. In terms of value, so a Grand National is 25, you said. Mm -hmm. What's an Aero Coupe? 
a nice one. Uh, it's still about the same kind of money. I think you can still Oof. get a good one in the teens and probably up to the 30s. And what's the like nicest car in the world? The I Moth don't think Volvo. I've seen one exceed 40,000 bucks. Okay, so nowhere near a Grand National. No, Excuse no. me, a Gen X. Nowhere no, near a, no, Grand, yeah, a exactly, Gen X. Yeah, but, yeah. but Grand National money. Yeah. If it were me, I'd do Grand National all day long. I think I would too. So because mean, of the engine. Look, that's why they make vanilla and chocolate yeah. in the ice cream. What about the Herstols of that era? Same uh, that's vintage. That's pretty much the pistachio that they make in the <laughs> no ice cream department. No one wanted it. No, 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 no. They're fun cars. They're good cars. I love those cars. Yeah, and uh, you know, lots of great graphics going oh, on. And, yeah, you know, the, the three shifters. I know the crazy shifters and all that sort of stuff. And uh, you might actually meet Linda Vaughn one day. And I mean, you know, I've that would met be. Her. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me. I've actually met her. Yeah. So have I. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, uh, but anyhow, uh, you know, great uh, history with Hertz, yeah. uh, Hurst and Oldsmobile. Yeah, uh, have a fantastic. And what are those value-wise? Uh, you know, I'd have to check on those because I haven't seen any recently. Probably around the same money. Uh, As a Grand National. Oh, yeah. All conditions. Really? Maybe. So yeah. anything you want for twenty-five grand, but you choose. Twenty-five thirty-five is is kind of the sweet yeah. spot on something like that. And yes, you can spend forty. I'm not saying you can't. Yeah. And yes, you could probably spend fifty on the right car on that. Do you th do you see in your crystal ball which one's going higher? The Buick, the Olds, or the or the Chevy? I'd probably say the Buick because yeah. it has that big it's brother, the GNX. You know? Well, doesn't the engine have some value to it? Because the engine's oh, yeah. a better engine than the other yeah, two. Yeah, no, no, no. I know. But yeah. I mean, I think that more impact when it was yeah. new and, Absolutely. you know, kind of, you know, and people pay more attention to those. So I, I think that's probably. Okay. That's, I think that's a great choice. Love that choice. Okay. So this is a, we've covered a lot today. Yes, we have. So we're going we're gonna to turn this around to you guys. We're going to leave you guys with a question. And the question I think is pretty obvious. What choices would they pick that are not on our list here? But most importantly, you need to tell us why. There's a lot of choices too. Yeah, because I mean, this there's is a there's a lot going on there. There's we didn't cover we didn't cover like the EB 110s. We didn't cover 959s. Pacioni, mm -hmm. he I still think he's a moron. Well, then again, he's a Ford guy and he's a dentist, so of course he's a moron. But he sold. Do you know what he did? He sold that Speedster, that 89 Speedster, that 911, straight across for a four. Was it a 430 with a stick? Ooh. Convertible, straight across. Ooh. Ooh. I still want to slap him. Yeah. But that tells you the value of that 89 Speedster. Right. So with that, right. what are your choices for, what, 1980 right. to 2000? Yeah. Why? And I want to know what region of the world you hail from. And you know what I also want to know? If they own that car. Yeah. yeah. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. What is that first thing? Uh, you're going to say some phrase in German that I no, don't understand. No, that's the last oh, thing. okay. What's the first thing? He said something uh, about the subscribing. Oh, what yeah, they should you, do. You need to subscribe. You no, need, need to, to unsubscribe. unsubscribe on YouTube. And then you need to come back and subscribe again. And, and then you need to, everybody in your office needs to subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Every Pretty much every email address that you have. Everybody you know. They want it, they just don't know it. Ex and they need to click notifications. And they, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Click notifications. He's better at the pitch than I am. You're going to have well, to do this every episode. Yeah, that's because I don't have any horse in this <laughs> race. That's the reason. Uh, and then second, I'm going to leave you with a fun fact. Our guy from the restaurant yesterday just got back from Turkey. Oh yeah, yeah. You great place, Village. What was it, Village? Village Grill. In Village Great Grill in Great Falls. Excellent place. You guys should definitely go there. Good. So there you go. Some travel advice from Great Kenny. Fall, <laughs> great Falls, Virginia, not Great Falls, Montana. I don't know if they have a Village Grill there. Well, it's not, well I said Virginia. Did you? Oh, you know what? I didn't know until yesterday that there was a Great Falls, Maryland, as well. Yes, there is. Across the river. Yeah, it's really not a post office. It's a place, but yeah, uh, yeah. And a national park. Uh, well, the national park is in Virginia. You Techno. drove by it. I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But doesn't it go over to... No, uh, no there's a, a... Well, obviously there is a river there. And yeah. the river is owned by Maryland. So yes, I mean, you know, as soon yeah. as you step one foot in the... You don't want to do that at Great Falls Park, by the way, because you will die. But as soon as you put a foot into the water, you're in Maryland. So yes. Nice. Yeah. I did yeah. not know that. And of course, the CNO Canal is over there. And that's yes. probably what... Oh, and that's the of. park, isn't it? Right, exactly. Got it. Okay. Ready to rock? Yeah.